Hi, I'm Brian Poole. I'm an associate professor in the Department of Microbiology and Molecular Biology at Brigham Young University. And I'm going to talk today about coronavirus and the immune system. So I've already done one of these about the coronavirus. And so this is kind of part two, where the immune system gets to strike back and we will find out kind of where we're going to go from here. So the immune system has a lot to do with this virus infection, actually, and there's a lot of conflicting information out there. And so I thought maybe I'd try to clear up a few things. Uh, first of all, Something that a lot of people don't know is that when you have a viral infection, most of the damage and most of the reason why you feel sick is not because of the virus actually causing damage to your body. It's actually because the virus sets up an immune response and then your immune response in the process of trying to eliminate the virus makes you feel sick. This is especially true like with flu. You've, heard, you've had flu-like symptoms before, you hurt all over, you know, you don't want to get out of bed. That's your body telling you that you're sick. You need to conserve your energy and you shouldn't go fight you, you shouldn't go uh, hang out with other people uh, while the immune system fights the virus off. And so there are good reasons why you feel this way. It's miserable, but uh, most of even like the drugs that we have, like ibuprofen and things like that, are actually suppressing the immune system to try to make you feel better. This is also the case with coronavirus. Uh, a lot of the damage to the lung seems to be caused by the immune system, and a lot of the really severe disease seems to be caused by an overreaction of the immune system to the point that they're actually testing some drugs to try to calm it down to see if people will recover better. So a lot of the damage is caused by the immune system. Um, that doesn't mean we don't want the immune system though, because without the immune system the virus would just turn, take over and basically infect every single one of your cells and, and then you would die. So your immune system, much, much better to have it than not to have it, but it's usually also the reason why you might feel sick um, when you get an infection. Also, with, with this coronavirus especially, the immune system is why you get better, because uh, you'll get infected the virus will set up an infection in your lungs, it'll reproduce, and your immune system will eventually start to make uh, two different things that are very important to getting rid of that virus. The first is antibodies, and the second is T-cells. Um, so antibodies are little proteins that float through your bloodstream, and they like to bind onto the virus and lock it down and not let it do its thing. So what viruses want to do is to get inside of cells. These antibodies will cover the virus and not let them get inside of the cell. And so then if the virus can't get inside of a cell, it's pointless and you get better. Um, the second type of thing that the immune system does is it makes killer T cells. And killer T cells are basically like the, I like to think of them as the James Bond of the immunology world. Uh, they have a license to kill and they go out and they kill cells that are infected with a virus. You might think that that sounds a little weird. Why would your body have cells that are designed to kill other cells? Well, it's because cells that are infected with a virus are really no good to the body anymore. They just are going to make more viruses. And so if you kill them before they make more viruses, then you get rid of the virus infection. So those two things are very important, T cells and um, antibodies. And both of those are involved in killing the virus and getting rid of the infection. So if you get the coronavirus infection, um, you'll make antibodies that will bind specifically to that virus and prevent it from infecting other cells. And you'll make T cells that will specifically recognize the coronavirus and they'll kill the cells that it's in and then you will feel better, right? You'll get, you'll get better from the infection. This is also why we get memory against infection. So, you know, if you had your measles shot or if you've been infected with something, you're not going to get that again. That's why we call the immune system the immune system is because it makes you immune to things. Um, so those antibodies will linger in your body and they stay there for years. Um, and hopefully if you get the right kinds, they will protect you against being infected again. Uh, the same thing happens with T-cells. You have what are called memory T-cells and they will hang out and they'll be on the, the lookout for the virus infecting you again. And if that virus infects you again, it'll very quickly go in and kill the cells that, that the virus has infected and you won't have any problems and you won't even notice that you were infected and you will um, be immune. So a couple of things that I have heard is that a lot of people are worried that this virus may not cause immunity. In other words, if you've been sick, you might um, not be immune to the virus, you might be able to get it again. And to me, that's unlikely. I've read a lot of the papers on this topic and I haven't seen anything that would suggest that if you had a severe infection to the point where you knew you had the coronavirus, that your immune system would somehow fail to protect you in the future. Uh, there are good neutralizing antibodies 
Uh, by neutralizing antibodies, I mean the, these are the type of antibodies that prevent the virus from doing its thing. And you can make lots of different antibodies, but neutralizing antibodies are the ones that work. And so people do make good neutralizing antibodies. You may have heard that Tom Hanks is donating his blood to try to cure coronavirus patients. That's what he's doing, is he's giving his good antibodies that are blocking the, the virus from infecting to other people so that then it'll, it'll help them um, to recover and just basically give them a little boost on making their own antibodies by using his. So um, we do make good antibodies against the coronavirus. They neutralize the virus very well, um, and so they tend to work. An interesting study showed that the older you are and the more serious your infection are, the better the antibodies you make, the, the, more amount, the higher amount of these good antibodies that you make. So if you're an older person and you've survived a, 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 a you know, moderate to severe infection, you probably have really good immunity against it. If you're, a very, if you're a younger person and you didn't even know you were sick but you got infected, maybe your immunity won't be as strong. But um, definitely, we do make good antibodies against this virus. Um, I don't see any reason why they wouldn't protect us. Obviously, with science, you know, you don't know for sure until you absolutely test something. But unless this virus is unlike almost every other virus, there's no reason to believe that your antibodies that you make wouldn't protect you. Also, with the the Prior coronavirus, like uh, SARS-1, this is SARS-2, it's very closely related to SARS-1. Um, with SARS-1, you had T cells, remember these cells that go in and killed the virus that lasted for, they tested them, you know, even three to five years out and they still had good T cell responses. So you not only make good antibodies against these coronaviruses, you also make good T cells against the coronaviruses. So a lot of people are afraid um, that you won't get good immune system, that we'll be stuck in our houses forever, and um, that even this would even prevent something like a vaccine from working. But it seems like, from what I've read, we make good immunity, we have good antibodies, we make good T cells, and so I would be very surprised if our immune systems couldn't handle this virus and we weren't immune. In other words, once you have the infection, you're probably safe. Um, that doesn't mean you should think, oh, I was sick during this time, I'm safe, I'm just gonna go out and ignore my social distancing or whatever. No, don't do that. Um, keep playing it safe. Uh, you know, you don't know for sure that you were infected. There's no really good test to guarantee that you were infected. There's no really good test right now to guarantee that you have these right kind of antibodies. So don't, you know, just believe that because you were sick, you're, you're now fine. But um, I have high level of confidence that people who have gotten the disease will be immune and that a vaccine will work. Um, and so that'll kind of get us out of this. A second thing that a lot of people have talked about is the virus mutating. And there have been rumors that there are four different strains of the virus and that it mutates really fast and that, you know, even if you have an immune response against it, then it'll change like the flu does and you'll need a new shot every year. And that might be the case. Um, the immunity may not last very long, um, especially if you just had it once and it was a minor infection or the virus might mutate. Um, it does have an RNA genome. So that means that whereas, you know, we have DNA inside of our cells, this virus has RNA. Um, and RNA tends to not be very careful with how it's replicating. It just kind of, you know, it's a little willy-nilly and it makes a lot of mistakes. And so you get mutations, um, which are changes to the virus. And like with flu, it mutates so much every year that we need a new flu shot every year because it just changes. And what your immune system recognized last year is no longer what's in the new virus this year. Um, but this virus is bigger than flu and it actually does better at replicating its RNA than flu does. So it doesn't have as high of a mutation rate. I'm thinking that, you know, it, it may mutate, we may need to update the vaccine like we do with flu, but there are a lot of RNA viruses out there that you don't have to get every year. So like polio, measles, mumps, you know, you don't have to get a new vaccine every year. Those are, those are all RNA viruses too. And so we just don't know at this point, you know, how the vaccine is going to work, whether we're going to need to update it or not. But right now, there's no reason to think that the virus is mutating a lot. Um, it seems to be mutating fairly slowly. There's no real difference between the strains that people have seen, uh, at least clinically, you know, that make it make a difference in terms of how sick you get. And hopefully we'll design a vaccine and you'll get it once and you'll be done. I don't know if that'll be the case, but it might be. And that would be really great. So kind of to sum up uh, with the coronavirus, your immune system is your best friend because it will fight the virus off. It will keep you healthy. Um, it will probably protect you into the future. Um, for how long, I'm not sure, but, you know, a year or two at least. It will allow you to get vaccinated against the virus. And, uh, and unfortunately, a lot of the symptoms of the virus are probably caused by the immune system 
um, kind of going a little bit nuts and attacking yourself. Thanks for listening. Questions you can ask in whatever medium you're looking at this. And if I do another video, then I'll try to answer them. So thanks a lot. Thank you.